Hey, let's uh, let's jump into the uh, let's jump right down to the flip here. Um, and I think a good debate that 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 we saw here is there's a lot of open AI discussion about you know is this the tulip bubble canary in the coal mine or is open AI you know the 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 real deal? And it really started um, with this Brad Gerstner interview that um, I think Satya was part of and Sam Altman. Uh, was on where they were uh, discussing valuation. And I think uh, people walked away and thought that Sam Altman uh, was very defensive in in how he uh, justified the amount of investment. And then we saw a lot of other things come out. I think that was kind of the where the, the, the latest bearish cycle uh, in AI uh, happened. Then you had Gemini 3, right, the can, that comes out uh, where – you know, Google really wasn't relevant in the in the in the conversation uh, until then, and and now they were. So hey, let's uh, let's dive into into this. Uh, is OpenAI the real AI deal? All right, I chose my own uh, chose my own. Call your own name. I called my own name. Thank you. So. Um, yeah, I do think that OpenAI is is the real deal. I mean, Google may have put out the paper first on Transformer, but they sat on it for for seven years and didn't do anything with it. And then OpenAI took the ball, and and here we are today. And I think the seven hundred, you know, the I always like to say, and I even use this in in team meetings, is the um, the best way to gauge the true value of anything is how much money people are willing to pay. And if you look at that 750, 800, 800 billion dollar valuation uh, implies that um, they believe that they're viewing core infrastructure. I think Daniel, you even said it earlier in the podcast that um, there is information that investors see like that, that, that we don't. And I highly doubt that these super informed uh, billionaires who are investing into open AI and these countries and hedge funds and family offices uh, would invest in that if, if they, if they don't, um, if they don't believe in it. And if we truly believe in the $4 trillion GDP adder, uh, it seems like uh, putting, you know, an $800 billion valuation on it, uh, you know, seems seems like it it, it makes a, a perfect perfect sense. You know, it took about uh, it took OpenAI about a week uh, to bring out five point two. That uh, shows that it uh, on on many uh, important applications, it actually trumps uh, any other model. It was almost like okay, uh, red alert. Uh, let's decide that uh, we're not going to do some of these sideshows. Let's actually focus for a couple weeks on something and boom, uh, uh, here we go. And the other thing is, is that if you look at who OpenAI has hooked its wagon to from an enterprise perspective, I think you and I both have agreed that the biggest value unlock is gonna be for businesses. And the leader in business IT uh, today uh, at scale is Microsoft, uh, all the way from, I mean, they are the absolute a uh, full stack there, all the way the applications to the applications developers, and everything that uh, they uh, they 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 create. So, um, uh, yeah, they are having to go to you know get money from a lot of different uh, companies, but that's just because they need a lot of infrastructure to uh, to drive that out there and. I think if you know some people are poo pooing people like Oracle and and things like that, but I think that's that's just uh, noise. If we look at the the value that this uh, that this company can uh, uh, bring them, and that's it. They're the real deal. OpenAI is the real deal. OpenAI is absolutely positively the canary in the coal mine. This is where the AI trade implodes. But the good news is, I don't believe AI as a whole has any risk. I just think it's all the risk sits with OpenAI. This is a company that's overcommitted, it's overextended, and it no longer is over the top the best of anything. 
Its models are just okay. They're parity to others. You've got companies with more money, more resources, and bigger customer bases that are building products and services that compete. And once you say, hey, do I really care which model is doing the work for me? Or am I okay with Gemini? Am I okay with Anthropic? Am I okay with uh, Nemotron 3 or some other open source model? Not Deep Sea. But the point is, is that open AI to be successful can't just be a model company. It has to be a hyperscaler. It has to be a software company. It has to be an agentic platform. It has to actually do all the work to justify the valuation of a trillion dollars or more. It can't just be the company that's providing models to other companies. So here's what's going to end up happening is we're going to continue to see model parity. We're going to continue to see other models become better and better, more accessible, more usable, more affordable, and less volatile and less arrogant than open AI. Sam Altman himself is a liability to the company. He wasn't just dismissive. He was flippant about the valuation, basically saying, screw you, put your money in, we're worth all this. But at the end, everybody that's evaluating this thing says, why would this be worth a trillion? Why is this worth a trillion and a half? If I could just replace OpenAI 5.2 with Gemini 3 or, or Opus 4.5 or any other model that's out there, it's not a problem for AI. The great news for everyone out there is Oracle is not really in trouble because Oracle will see that demand come from someone else. If they build the compute, another company that's building AI will use the compute that they make available. Even CoreWeave, which I don't love the fact that they do the six-year depreciation and they lever all their GPUs up. As long as the AI industry keeps growing, and I think that insatiable, insatiable demand exists, even CoreWeave could be okay. But the problem with OpenAI is what they're doing can be replaced instantly by another company. And once that gets replaced, the demand goes elsewhere, but OpenAI is no longer worth what people are saying OpenAI is worth. When that happens, that will be possibly the first implosion. This could absolutely be the Netscape of the AI era. It's not that what they did is wrong. It's not that they weren't first to come to market. And it's not even that what they built isn't good. It's just that good enough, and in some cases, parity, We'll see a seismic transfer of, us of usage from one platform to another. And there's a real possibility that it doesn't stick, that people go elsewhere, they use other models. And if these models do in fact become commoditized, which I think they could in some way, and they aren't plugged in as part of that enterprise stack or part of that robotic stack, then they just become one other company offering a model. No way they can grow enough revenue to support the trillion and a half dollars of commitments they've made. No way they can drive enough revenue to reach profitability. And so the musical chairs are going around and somebody's gonna sit down on a round of capital for open AI. And it's gonna be the last up round before the down rounds begin. So AI is gonna be fine, but open AI, you're in trouble. All right. Thank you for participating and giving me another W. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, Daniel, let's jump in. Yeah. I think I won big. Bigly. I, I was actually curious how are you going to thread the needle between AI trade and, and open AI? You did a pretty good job. Oh, I could do it without blowing up everything I say every day. Exactly. By the way, like, as I was making that argument, I'm really thinking to myself, like, isn't that the risk, though? Like, I don't think the demand for AI goes away. I think we're just getting started. But isn't there a world, like, talk to, you know, your son who builds, right? Like, if Gemini 3, if like the things that ChatGPT do for us can be done by another model and you're building like these agents and workflows, like, isn't there a point where you're like, I can plug in one for another? So unless the enterprises say, we're going to pour all our data into, into OpenAI and we're going to build our entire agentic workflows through OpenAI, isn't that a huge risk? Like that there, they are a model that could be, I mean, they've got a huge user base, but. I think you answered it yourself, which is you can't just take what you've created in OpenAI uh, agent agent tool and import it into Gemini. Um, and so, you know, it gets down to this agentic orchestrator, joint agentic uh, tool set that is the new lock-in at this point, because there's no standard for, for, for any of this stuff. So. And you know, I think there's 10x more developers on on OpenAI than there are Google uh, at this point. All kind of cranking. The question is, uh, you know, how how deep uh, are they in that that they can't do an about face? And then you look at the cost, right, of it, where Google's full stack and OpenAI is not. So conceptually, Google can get the revenue and they have a lower cost, which 
Can I make it? Can I make an interesting prediction? I know we got to get to the last segment. I think OpenAI is too big to fail, but I think it could very easily fail, semi fail into Microsoft, which was your argument. Like Microsoft doesn't have what OpenAI has, which it means like all that compute capacity it's acquired, all that IP that it's built to really, you know, to basically become Microsoft's version of what Google's built. I mean, that to me is like the ultimate fallback. Is like they just basically get swallowed up by, by Microsoft, and Microsoft takes that and it becomes the platform. And then OpenAI and Microsoft fully integrated, not yeah. what they're doing today, but fully integrated becomes meaningfully competitive with what Google can do in the long run. 